Yeah, for obviously been a little while since we've done this, obviously just after training now, how's it been so far today? Yeah, good session. Um, we um, began some of our prep for, um, for Hartlepool and it was one of the few sessions left this season where we could get a little bit of running into the lads. Um, so yeah, it was a useful, uh, a useful morning. Obviously looking back to Saturday, a frustrating day for everyone involved really. Yeah, very. We wanted to play the game. Ebbsfleet wanted to play the game. You know, it's um, uh, ultimately the referee's decision. You know, obviously there are there are issues around the pitch, but um, it, it certainly ain't going to improve a great deal now at this stage of the season. So um, it was a disappointment that we didn't get it on and uh, um, maintain that sort of high off the back of Chesterfield. We were really looking forward to it, but you know that's the way it is. We've got to be adaptable. We've got to knuckle down, crack on, and get ourselves ready for Hartlepool. Because we were both there for that earlier pitch inspection. I think we both felt that it was probably probably playable with a little bit of work and then obviously it doesn't help when the referee gets stuck in the traffic on the M62. No, it needed a bit of time and um, you know I think that the truth is we know the pitch well enough and you know I know was the groundsman had his concerns when I arrived but uh, over the period of time uh, between the first and second pitch inspections the improvement was great with you know and, and Oz by his own admission couldn't do anything really himself to help the pitch but um, just mother nature uh, a bit of sun a bit of a breeze and um, and what have you definitely improved it the big sort of question mark would have been whether or not a downpour in the game would have then caused it to deteriorate so much that the game wouldn't have been able to continue but you know I'm always a believer you've got both teams there you know most of the absolute fans are virtually there we, we you know we get it on and if if the worst comes to the worst and we have to we have to knock it on the head halfway through. Then at least we've had a go. But you know that wasn't the opinion of the referee. Of course, then uh, obviously our last fixture was the Chesterfield game. Just what a night that was! Great, really good night. Um, you know we're, we're not uh, they're not unfamiliar occasions those two as are they? We tend to we tend to really uh, perform on on the, the sort of bigger stage if you like. So um, you know we know that. The, the bigger followings and uh, the big occasions don't don't um, uh, don't impact our performances negatively. So it was great to see the way the lads performed and and uh, and, and in such a convincing manner against a really good team. I mean, you know, since then Chesterfield have obviously won the league, and you know, I, I think the world of Paul Cook. I think he's a fantastic manager. I think he's a fantastic man, um, and I'm, I'm really delighted for him and the staff that they got what they deserved eventually in terms of winning the title but um, um, but Wednesday night was a real good occasion for us and, and fills us with confidence going forward. Of course now on recent form obviously that's seven wins in our last day and just, just the one defeat. Yeah and it means nothing if we go and get beat by Hartlepool does it it's you know we've got to we've got to keep backing it up and we're at a stage of the season where you know you can't afford to, to take your foot off the gas we've got to keep pushing forward and, and, um, and do everything we can to prepare and and do uh, what we need to do to try and beat Hartlepool because that's you know that's the only thing that counts now. And um, what's gone is gone. And um, going forward, we want to try and pick up a win on Friday. Of course, obviously looking back maybe to last season, comparing with where we were back then, we're nine places high. We've, we've scored about 13 more, and we've conceded one less as well. That must be very pleasing there. Yeah, it is. It's great. I mean, listen, I've got a lot of experience at this club, and you know, I look back at the time when me and Pete first came in, and you know, we we had a. We had a playoff finish in the first season, but I think those who who know probably look at that and say we were we were in a we were in a very sticky patch when that season was curtailed because of COVID and um, the points per game calculation probably helped us out because we were we were well on course for a mid-table finish on the the sort of form we were in. Um, then the second season we did have a mid-table finish. We finished in tenth, and then the third season obviously was the real cracker. That was the one where um, we managed to we managed to evolve and develop the squad into a real fighting force at the top end of the table, and that's that's how it works here. You know, you you it's not going to be quick fixes where we go out and and uh, and just buy a title winning squad in one season. We've got to develop it and um, produce it over a period of time. And I think these lads are showing the ability to to do that to fight at the top end of the table, and and we certainly uh, we certainly are. Uh, piling on the pressure for us to keep maintaining the current run of form so that come the end of the season we can be pleased with what we've achieved. Of course obviously it's the transfer deadline on Thursday, can we expect any activity from the club? 
possibly we're having one or two meetings and one or two chats today about um, possible areas to make sure that we're not left too uh, too thin. Um, we know from the, the FA Trophy experience where you're taking you know the likes of Frankie Sinfield and Ted Lavelle to to fill the bench and, and um, great experience for them and, and you know delighted that they were able to be part of that because they are a big part of the club's future but um, uh, we need to make sure that we've got enough players and enough players of quality in the in the squad to uh, to be able to compete for um, for the final few games of the season and hopefully carry us forward. Of course, looking ahead now, obviously the Easter weekend fixtures, two big games, Hartlepool away first and then York City at home on the Monday. Yeah, uh, yeah, big fixtures. Absolutely, you're right. Um, Hartlepool are, a, are, a, are a, a you know a, a real decent team. You know, you look at the individuals they've got, and you look at the. Um, maybe the recent run of form not outstanding but up until the last few games they've been playing some fantastic football and, and obviously Manny just banging them in all season so uh, so that'll present a real test and obviously we're going away from home which presents its, its uh, certain challenges as well so, uh, so it'll be an exciting day Friday and we're really looking forward to trying to maintain the current run of form so as you mentioned there, that York City game is a, will actually be the one-year anniversary from the Altrincham semi-final. I'm sure there's plenty of great memories from that. Yeah, it was a special day. I mean, I remember the, I remember it clearly. We weren't great, were we, Luke? <laughs> was, we were pretty poor, to be honest with you, and I think. Um, but we grew into the game. And one thing this group of players has got, the, the ones left from last season, and the players who, who we've brought in is a, a resilience and a... Uh, a perseverance, you know, they, they, they never know when they're beaten, they keep going, they work incredibly hard and uh, and that really shone through on that day in particular and I, I remember being on the sideline and the moment the goal went in to equalise, I remember saying to Pogsy, the goalie coach, that, you know, we're, go we're going to Wembley here because you just knew, I think everybody in the stadium probably knew but certainly those connected with Halifax knew that it was a, uh, it was a significant moment in our season and um, and and, uh, and and we, we you know, if we're honest, we, we kind of knew that was the point where we were we were off to Wembley. Yeah, and it's certainly that equaliser felt like a, a real turning point for the club. Yeah, well, we were on a good run. I mean, it, the the turning point for me was we had a real poor run of results through January and February last season, and it it culminated in a miserable one nil defeat at home to Maidenhead. Um, and it was yeah, it was a real a real challenge at that time with injuries and illnesses and. Um, really struggling for form and then um, we went and beat Wheelston at home on the Tuesday after the Maidenhead game we beat them 5-0 if I remember rightly but that was the turning point where we were just very front footed the lads really threw the shackles off and, um, and went after Wheelston and, and not dissimilar to this season you know we've worked hard we've built up a, 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 a reputation for being hard working and well organised and difficult to beat over the first half of the season and then in the second half when uh, the team's really begun to gel the new lads have settled in they've, uh, the new and existing players have, have worked each other out and know how to play with each other um, and we're, we're starting to hit a different run of form and, and show some different characteristics in how we play Obviously looking to this season then, what's been your most enjoyable match from this season? Uh, there's been a few actually. We've we've gone through some games at various stages of the season to really try and keep anchoring the lads back to um, us and the traits that really come out when we play well. So, you know, we look at certain statistics, but also we look at performances and results. Um, I think there was there was a real control and um, professionalism about us away at Altrincham on Boxing Day. It was interesting because I think. Um, you know, we didn't get probably as much credit for that as we should have done. Um, certain, you know, other comments around the performance maybe didn't credit the lads. The scoreline at two-one probably didn't show the true reflection. I think they had six touches in our box on that day, um, and we controlled their possession when they had it, and we controlled ours incredibly well when we had it. So that was a, a fantastic performance. And then you look at results and performance, and you've got to say Chesterfield, albeit we conceded two goals and. We, we never want to concede. Um, we went out and we went toe to toe with an outstanding team. You know, a team who scored will score in excess of 100 goals come the end of the season, and and probably you know achieve well into 100 points. So, um, so I think they're probably the two that stand out for me. But um, 
Um, but there's been a few where we've 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 looked like a, a real force and a real uh, a real proper football team. So coming towards the end of your second season now as town manager, what's been your favourite memory since being at the club? Well, I mean, it's, it's not often you get to win a game at Wembley, is it? And and that was the objective, you know. I remember as soon as we went there, and the the focus is really around going to Wembley and experiencing being uh, playing a game at Wembley and being in a final. But we were immediately onto the fact that you know you, you don't want to be coming away from there as a as a loser. You know, I spoke to a I spoke to a couple of friends who've who've got bags of experience of, of playing and, and coaching and managing at, at Wembley and they spoke about the, the real high of winning but the, the real low of coming away having been beaten and, and you know we were on our guard immediately about that we didn't want to be a team who came away from from such an amazing potentially once in a lifetime experience with that negative feeling of having been beaten so um, so there have been loads you know uh, Wrexham on Good Friday last year, fantastic game, fantastic experience. Chesterfield more recently was was excellent. Um, the as you mentioned, the Altrincham semi-final win was a it wasn't a great performance, but wow, what a what an experience that was! And and then you've got the the joy of um, of seeing the lads go out, implement a game plan, absolutely work the socks off, and and really earn the victory against Gateshead. Um, in the trophy final, it's hard to top that one. I think. Obviously, looking back to this season, how happy have you been with it so far? Yeah, not not so happy now. You know, we've got a lot of work to do. We, we've we've got um, plenty more football to play, lots of points to play for. Uh, we've still got a job to do. It starts with Hartlepool. That's the the, the immediate focus. Um, we'll assess the success of the season. Um, or otherwise when we get to Eastley and hopefully we'll have a few more games to play after that point but um, but that's the stage at which we'll we'll assess how successful or otherwise we've been um, you know there are certain successes in terms of recruiting and developing uh, an exciting young squad um, you know I think Tom Scarville put out recently a, a statistic about us having used the least number of players um, in the league so far this season, which is I think is a, a success and a credit to the club that you know we bring in players and we we play them. You know we we put our faith in and we trust them, and players who come here get the opportunity to play and show what they can do. Um, I think that's a success and something we should we should be pleased with. Um, so far, we've not needed to rely on the loan market, and I would imagine we're probably unique in that. I don't know for sure, but. You know, we've recruited players to come and play and we develop our own and we, um, of course we will lean on other clubs players and we may well do that before the season's out but it's something that we should be proud of that um, we don't just go dipping into the loan market every five minutes to bring in more players and, and, and bulk up the squad uh, so that's a success I think some of the work the staff have done around developing our analysis developing our statistical analysis and the way we use stats uh, to try and assess and improve performance, you know, stuff that is really boring to, to everyone outside of the, the club. But you know, it's something that we should um, uh, we should be pleased with how it's progressing. So, so there's a lot of things that we feel we're doing well and we've improved. But um, but in terms of the success of the season as a whole, yeah, we can't we can't assess that until the final whistle uh, at Eastley. Because obviously, certainly over the last couple of weeks, we've certainly been scoring plenty of goals. weren't quite doing so in the early stage of the season. What, what do you reckon's changed there? Yeah, a couple of things. The, the, the um, uh, clearly the system has changed. We've we've got extra bodies higher up the pitch. Um, we set our stall out in the early part of the season to be organised, hard working, hard to beat, um, and we, and we were that. And then. Uh, you know, we obviously had Millie Alley around it at the time, who gave us a certain physical presence and a certain ability to um, to get up the pitch and score, which allowed us to play that system and that style a bit more. Um, and then we, we, you know, we always wanted that second system in our back pocket, ready to move to. And the time was right in January to do that. It, it took us probably two or three games to really start to get to grips with it, but. Um, but once we did, we, we looked like a good team. You know, we looked like a team, and a lot of the players who, who were now playing regularly in the starting eleven are playing in permit positions that are much more familiar to them than would have been in the the three four three shape that we played earlier in the season. So, um, so it's no surprise that we've 
we've improved and we've started to um, started to play a little bit more attractive football. That was by design, not by coincidence. You know, we wanted to start to look to control possession much better, um, create more scoring opportunities, create more touches in the opposition box, be a bit more front-footed in terms of our press, so preventing the opposition having lots of passes in their possessions. So um, we're moving in the right direction with that stuff, but we'll keep keep working to do so. Yeah, that was a, it was specifically asked about how, how important Pogs is for Sam, but I suppose the same goes for the rest of the staff and how important they are for the, for the team. Yeah, the staff are brilliant. I mean, these are people who maybe don't get the credit they deserve, certainly don't get the limelight shone on them as much as they should. You know, the, the professional people and the approach, the, the game in a professional way, the approach the job here in a, a, a really professional manner. Um, and, you know, they, they, they're very, very committed to the club. You know, there, there's... there's Maybe a couple of us who are considered full time, but virtually every member of staff has has got another another role elsewhere. You know, because they can't just live off off Halifax Town, unfortunately. And and these are things that maybe people don't realise. You know, other clubs have uh, big staff, uh, big numbers of staff who were uh, who are completely full time, who are sole focuses working for that particular football club. We we don't have that privilege. You know, we've got a. Um, a fantastic group of people who are massively committed to the football club, but um, you know maybe don't get the credit that they deserve. In terms of Pogs and Sam, I'd say Sam's probably more important for Pogs than Pogs is for Sam. I think it keeps him on the straight and narrow. But um, but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely and unique relationship. Obviously, then looking, obviously we've had a number of postponements over over the course of the season, last few months, and obviously the fixture congestion can be problematic. But I suppose in the form we're in, can be a bit of a blessing as well. Yeah, I mean it's hard. it's a real tough one really because uh, we want to play, you know, we want to play games when they're scheduled and 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 keep that regular rhythm up. You know, if you're winning, you want to maintain the momentum, and if you're not, you want to put it right as quickly as you can. So postponements are always a headache for us, and also it throws off your training program. Um, you know, it makes it more more challenging to manage that, but. Um, but we are, we're adaptable, we're a flexible group of people and we'll, we'll make sure that we, um, uh, that we find the, the small wins wherever we can. And, and listen, you know, the, the, I think I've gone on record in the past as saying sometimes you, you, you want to play but there might be a silver lining to that cloud in that it gives certain players extra time to recover and vice versa, the fixture congestion towards the end of the season um, may cause issues with, uh, with fatigue for, for certain others. So, you know, we have to just approach it in a positive manner and do whatever we can to try and get the result. So coming up now to the end of end of the season, obviously, where are we at with the player contract talks? Yeah, well, it's. I think I said at the beginning of the season, this is one of those things that you know it's, it's something we need to find a way to to improve. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves sort of losing players who we've developed um, at the end of every season. Um, and it's getting harder, I think. Again, I, I look back to the time when, when me and Pete first came in and, you know, we had, uh, there was, I'd say we were probably, you know, upper bottom half of the table in terms of our budget and resources. And every year now we're getting teams coming up from divisions below. We've got greater resources and greater financial clout. And obviously the teams dropping out of the league come in with a, um, a much better structure of resources and, and financial clout so it it gets tougher and, and to be um, to really progress um, we've got to find a way to, to secure people who are coming into the sort of 24 25 26 year old age bracket rather than losing them at 23 24 we need to be finding a way to keep hold of them and I know conversations went on in autumn about how we how we do that and at the time I know there wasn't a great deal of money in the club, and um, uh, attendances were down, and you know concerns over income. So we weren't able to to start those conversations with the players at that point. And then you get to this stage of the season, and our focus has got to be on performances and games. You know we can't be getting distracted by contract negotiations. So. At the moment, it'll be a case of sitting down with every individual come the end of the season and, and doing everything we can to, to persuade them to stay. Um, we know they'll have better financial offers elsewhere because that's where we're at. But what we will do is we'll try and put a, um, a pitch to them that, that uh, sells the, the whole experience of playing for Halifax Town. And listen, 
if there's if there's one way to be successful in securing the lads who are out of contract this season, that would be offering them League Two football with Halifax Town. So let's uh, let's see if we can do that. I think you more or less answered my next question there. But have you had a chance to, to look ahead to next season yet in terms of recruitment? We're always looking. Yeah, I've got meetings going on with um, with Gaz McClellan, the head of recruitment, all the time. So he's um, he's he's out at games two, three games a week. He's got uh, numerous uh, uh, other scouts that he works with to um, to make sure that we're keeping tabs on certain players. Um, everything from under 21s football uh, through to League One and League Two. You know, we look at, at uh, right across the board, and you know. What, what we try and do is identify those players who might be going under the radar, missed games through injury over a longer period, maybe been a little bit unlucky in terms of the system that's being played at their club that doesn't suit them or doesn't work for them, maybe playing under a manager who, for whatever reason, doesn't doesn't rate or doesn't value them and look for those uh, those players who might be um, might be just slipping through the cracks a little bit so that we can you know, we know what we'll offer them. We'll, as I've said earlier on, we'll offer them football. They'll get the opportunity to play here. Uh, they'll be coached. They'll be uh, developed. And um, and in most cases, so far, we've we've shown that there's a pathway for players who've come here. Um, so we're, we're always working to make sure that we don't miss a trick and don't miss out on anybody who's going to be able to uh, to come in and, and help us improve. Now, uh, obviously, what, what is your honest opinion on the fans? Maybe a slightly risky question. On the on the fans. On the fans yeah. Oh, the fact. Listen, the fans are brilliant. I know. Um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I guess some are quick to criticise me, and I'm, I'm quite open when I believe that you know we need more from them, and uh, the, the vast majority are, are fantastic. And and then the, there are a number of critics, um, and it's you know they're, they're, they they pay the way. They've got a right to to voice their opinions, but I think sometimes they've got to recognise where we are. Sometimes recognise what. The constraints are and where we are on the journey, you know, because it, 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 every season's a journey with us. You know, I, I, I'd anticipate at the beginning of next season we'll, we'll be recruiting, you know, 40 to 50 percent of a, of a new squad, um, and and that that doesn't just click straight away. It takes hard work, it takes time, um, some elements of trial and error, learning about players on the job. Um, so, you know, I think sometimes the they don't. Some of the fans maybe don't recognise the amount of work that goes into building a squad, developing a squad, and when you're having to do that every year, it isn't always going to be a perfect, uh, perfect line on the graph. It ain't going to be a perfect journey. There's going to be ups and downs along the way. But I think what we've shown over the last two seasons is that we can get that right. We can develop it, and we can identify, recruit. Uh, exciting young players who the fans should be proud of and the club should be proud to have. You know, we've seen some fantastic young players uh, move on from here, and we should take pride in players going to League One. Uh, we should take pride in players going into League Two to other clubs. We should have a, a sense of pride about the fact that they've, you know, we've played a large part in that journey. Um, and if we can just hold on to those, some of those players for, you know, 18 months or two years longer. Then you know there's no reason why they shouldn't be playing for us in League Two or dare I say it, even League One. You know what I mean? I think the club's got the potential for that, um, but we've got to do certain things better. And and look, the fans recognise that, and the fans, some of the fans' frustration, I think, is that you know they want us to progress. They're desperate to see success at the show, um, and you know you see them on a night like the Chesterfield night, and they're just there's there's, there's no better fans in the division. Um, so we know that they're just desperate for success, but um, I think some, some could realise that we're just equally as desperate. We're working our socks off to try and achieve it as well. And obviously this season certainly, but not always done the, the post-match interviews, certainly when we win. Um, what is the reason behind that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the um, I, I had a, I had a, a moment um, probably... Listen, I've always known. I think I spoke to the chairman about it when I first he first offered me the job. And this stuff in my forte, I'm not great at it. I don't relish it. I don't, you know, I don't really want to be um, in the spotlight a great deal. Um, you know, I'm not a Jurgen Klopp type. I'm not going to be fist pumping the south stand and knee sliding when we score goals because um, it just isn't who I am. 
you know, I, I, and I want the players to be those guys. I want them to be the ones who get the credit. You know, we do an awful lot of work, but they're the ones who have to go and put everything on the line for for the club and for us. Um, so they're the ones who deserve the the cheers and the the, uh, the applause and the fist pumps and what have you. So, um, so first of all, it ain't it ain't my forte for sure. Um, secondly, I felt at a stage in the season that I was possibly spending a little bit too much time sort of playing through what I should and shouldn't say and, you know, um, trying to, to sort of preempt what might come out. And really, I, I want and I need to be just focused on what's going off on the pitch and what's going off um, in the game. And, and, and after the game, my immediate reflections have to be, uh, have to be more measured and more tempered and and I know that doesn't always make great great copy for you guys. So, um, so the decision was made. Look, I I I carry the the responsibility. So if we lose or we draw, I'm the one who speaks to you guys. I'll speak to to Tom for the Courier. I'll speak to any media outlets that maybe want to speak to me um, off the back of a, a defeat or a, a draw because I feel I should take responsible for take responsibility for that. But when it comes to maybe explaining. Um, aspects of how we've won or ways in which we've um, we've unpicked or, or broken down an opposition team then I think that the other staff members are, are probably a little bit more skilled than me at that stuff and although people think they, they might want to hear from the manager they'll actually get a lot more uh, coherent explanation out of Andy Cooper or Pogsy or whoever else might stand up in front of the cameras or in front of Tom so it was just really about leaning on other people's strengths and making sure that um, you know that the, the right people get the credit for the right things, and uh, uh, yeah, that, that simple as that, really. But a couple of fun ones now to end it. Uh, would you rather have a spoon when you need a knife, or a knife when you need a spoon? It's always a spoon, isn't it? It's always a spoon. Can't give you a particular. Re- oh no, is it a knife? Touchy. I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd say you need a, a spoon. Is, is a slightly more useful than a knife. What do you think? Go on, give me the reason. I think you, if you need a spoon, you're going to struggle with a knife. But yeah, but I they're, they're, stuff down like. If, if it's not too tough, you can get away with a spoon. I, think. So, I thought it was quite a superficial question there, but it's actually quite deep, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I think about I'm it. I'm going to go with a spoon, but I, I'm reluctant. Maybe I'll go with spoon. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. And then uh, finally, what what would be your go-to meal deal, and where would you get it from? Oh my god, that is, that's tough. Mate, I don't know, you know. I don't, well, I do know, but I don't want to say because it's proper bland. <laughs> proper, I know everyone always, already thinks I'm a bit, I'm a bit vanilla, but I mean, this is gonna, this is gonna prove it. It's probably like, um, I'd go with the prawn cocktail crisps, a tuna and sweet corn sandwich, and if if I could squeeze in like a, a yazoo or a frige, however you say it, something like that, then one of them, but I'm also partial partial to a little Lipton's iced tea, so I wouldn't mind one of them. But, uh, Which shop would you get it from as well? Well, the Tesco, just up at the Shea, that's the one that, that tends to tends to get a fair amount of me custom, so whenever I'm getting a meal deal, that tends to be where I get them. And that's perfect, that's everything for us, thank you for your time. Great, okay, that was that was much more, much less painful than I thought <laughs> it was going to be, Luke, thanks very much. Thank you.